Hello everyone and welcome back to Gregtech New Horizons. In the last episode on livestream we got polytetrafluoroethylene automated here in these four LCRs. Very very useful fluid used in making these machines itself. We also added two more LCRs on the end here next to our distillation tower for silicon rubber used for the coating of wires. We got one more of our blast furnaces upgraded to HSSG coils and that is automatically being fed the output of this system right here. Basically this is a tungsten processing area. We input tungstate along with two other ores which we don't have access to yet. And once this goes through the blast furnace we can either make tungsten steel or regular tungsten ingots. Important for some of the higher tier machines. So today we're going to be making use of this thing. But not right now. Not right now. <laughs> we'll get onto this thing later. If we take a little trip back to our old base here, there is one or two systems that we still have to move over. The vast vast majority has already been moved. In fact, all of this is now redundant up here. What remains here at the old base is polyphenylene sulfide, also an ingredient used alongside silicon rubber to coat wire. I'm not sure if you can call this ore processing, but <laughs> ore processing is another big, big project we have to undertake fairly soon. But the thing I think we're going to start with today is platinum. And you might be wondering, yes, we have already built platinum, but it has to be moved and uh, has to be more efficient than what we had before. The thing is that we need platinum for the higher tier of circuits. Specifically the EV tier and above, this takes fine platinum wire. It's also used in the more expensive tech material crafts. And while this may look like a lot, it's not going to get us very far. So since we've already spent a decent amount of time doing platinum, I'm just going to make a start on this on my own. I'm not sure exactly where this is going to be placed or how far I'll get with this, but um, here goes nothing I guess. You know, things always take you longer than you expect in this game, don't they? But these machines you can see behind me is all for platinum processing. Right here is the shiny platinum dust. This thing we can just smelt into ingots, and this is what we use for everything. <laughs> so there's only been a couple of modifications. Some of the processes were moved into LCRs, and I actually separated two off here for ammonia and ammonium chloride. Ammonia is also used in some other processes later down the line. There is still one more byproduct we have to deal with out of this system, which is platinum salt dust. This thing we have to send through a sifting machine, which will then convert it into refined platinum salt dust. And this goes back to the start of the chain. So it's basically just a recycling system to get a little bit more of the input dusts back for this. But we're not going to spend too much more time on platinum. I think I'm going to go in depth on that thing later on for anyone who is curious. I think at this point though, it's time for some research. And the whole reason, in case you missed the livestream, the whole reason we're getting into Thumbcraft is because of this, this thing right here, <laughs> this printing press. So on livestream, we were opening in some loot boxes and to get the printing press to work, we need a Fortune 3 book. However, I did use the last Fortune 3 book. I was very sad when I realized that happened. You may notice though that there is no recipe for the enchantment table. And yeah, there is some other ways to get fortune books. I think the first one we got was from a dungeon somewhere. But I don't really feel like doing dungeons and we need to do Thumbcraft at some point. So yeah, let's jump in. Let's get magical. So if we take a look at our quest book here, the next thing we have to do is unlock a better wand. Right now we have the iron capped wooden wand, which is the very, very basic one. And we can't hold very much V in this thing, which is used to craft all the Thumbcraft items. So the next one we want to go for is the great wood wand. This should be the research paper right here. And that should have unlocked something here. <laughs> I think it was this. Yeah, so we just need some great wood logs. We should have some great wood somewhere. Nope, it's all gone apparently. Let's collect some more. We'll need to do this process a few times before we can get the best wand. I should maybe mention at the start of this, I am no Thumbcraft expert. Uh, we're going to be th taking things kind of slow compared to the Greg Tech progression. And as you can see, we have insufficient V. And those correspond with each of the primal aspects that you can get. All of which you'll find on various aura nodes, which we have marked on the map here. And we just have to go out and collect our energy. Obviously though, the higher tier wand you have, the less you have to do this. We still need Ordo. I don't know if we have an Ordo vein here. Once we go out and collect the V, we can grab our Greatwood Rod. Oh, the quest wants two of these things. 
Oh, great. <laughs> well then, we have a lot more flying about to do today. So we got air, aqua, and terra. More aqua and terra. Ignis. Not enough of it either. <laughs> it's only 22 of 25 that we have capped right now. I should really have been paying attention to these things earlier on. Oh, look at this. We got a rare Sith Lord. Look at this guy. Oh, he's a two shorter. What did he drop for us? Ethereal Essence. We just want your node here. Nothing we don't already have. In fact, no, I think we need Ordo here. Great Wood Rod number two. And the quest. So to actually use these Great Wood Rods, we need to go through this portal. And it's time for the next boss fight. So far, we've only taken out the Naga. Next on our list is the Lich. And I don't think we found a Lich. Oh yeah, we have found a few Lich Towers. To be honest, we are way over prepared for this, so I'm not expecting any issues. I hope not, anyway. <laughs> Alright, where are you? There he is. Our old friend. <laughs> this guy got me in Divine Journey. Oh, is the fight different here? Oh no, it's the same. We have to knock back the pearls. It doesn't help that my accuracy is absolutely awful. Where is he? <laughs> oh, come on, hit me. Oh, we got our first hit. Oh, we just one shot him. <laughs> All right, well, I'll take that. And we should have got some Lich Bones, yes. Oh, but we need four though. All right, well, I think there is another Lich Tower over this direction. And yes, I know there is a crafting recipe for Lich Bones, but this requires us to have Sailor's Mundus, which needs Balance Shards, and this needs the Crucible recipe. And I really would rather avoid doing any more Crucible recipes until we have the Goggles of Revealing. Here's our second Lich Tower coming into view. And two shot again. <laughs> Hey, we got our quest. Okay, so now that we've got our Lich Bones, we can craft the next Iron Wand. We need two more Iron Caps. And we also need a full wand again. Where is this thing? There it is. <laughs> Careful not to drain it all though. I heard that if you drain it all, then it disappears, and we want to keep these things around. We can combine our Lich Bones, Iron Caps, Stainless Steel Screws, and the Great Wood Rod for the Iron Capped Great Wood Wand. Oh no, we didn't get the quest. Oh, we didn't hold stainless steel screws. <laughs> Please tell me we don't need to make another one. Oh, it's a checkbox. It's a checkbox. Okay. We're good. We're good. All right. So in order to upgrade this wand anymore, we need to do a bit of arcane infusion. Wait a second. What am I doing here? We want potential. There we go. So it looks like to unlock the research for this, we need to grab some nitre. Made in the crucible. I don't really want to be doing things here. Hmm. Maybe it's time to do a little bit of building, and I'm thinking that we put all of our Thongcraft area over this side of the base. We do have Thomic Energistics here, which means that we can hook up our AE system. It's just going to be a matter of running a line across this way, but we are going to need some space to work with. Alright, about 100 blocks this way is our new Thomcraft area. This is where we're going to put our infusion altar. And I haven't really decided a place for the cauldron yet, which was the whole reason I set this up. I think it's going to go back here somewhere. And then we're going to have jars, warded jars on the edges to pull the Ascendia. I'm also thinking about changing the block palette here, just to have something a bit different to the base, a bit more magical. But there is some items in Thomcraft that can help us with this. I have also been doing a lot of research, and uh, I think it's time we make the Goggles of Revealing. This should give us it. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, this thing costs 33, which we were not able to make with our old wand here, as this only had a cap of 25, wherever I left that thing. We also get our quest. Very fancy looking. Even with the Galactic Craft helmets and things on as well. But most importantly, this thing gives us a V discount when we craft things. I also did mention that we needed to do infusion for the next wand. That isn't technically true. We just need some more uh, some more V here. And now that we're wearing the goggles, we don't actually have to use the thermometer anymore to see what's in the node. It's also much, much clearer to see the nodes now. I don't think we had discovered this one before and it's like right next to the other one. <laughs> Anyways, now we can make the gold banded Greatwood wand, which will also give us a discount. 
But obviously we don't want to stop there. We can get more of a discount. And we could just go for the Thaumaturge's robe set, which is the vanilla version. But I think instead we're going to go for the Bewitched set here. Which is 5% discount, compared with just 2. I think we need to start here with the spinning wheel from Witching Gadgets. Which is apparently is a quest. We'll also need to unlock the research for Enchanted Fabric. Oh, this is just a small one. That's good. <laughs> there we go. Alright, that gives us Enchanted Fabric. I think that should have unlocked the armor for us in Witching Gadgets. Oh, we maybe need Bewitched Fleece as well. Th this is the problem with Thomcraft. <laughs> you don't actually know what you're doing here. Okay, hopefully this works. Aha! Although, as it turns out, we actually need the Thaumaturge set anyway. It looks like this is the upgrade path to that, so we need to start off with that thing. That's going to start off by making some enchanted fabric. And we are completely out of cotton. Just one more reason why we have to upgrade our farming system. But we kind of need Thaumcraft in order to do that, as I would like to get access to some more ender chests. It's okay, we have a lot of cotton planted here. So I'm counting 54 of this woven cotton for the full set. That's going to be a lot of string. Okay, we got the cotton and double the amount of string. I don't think we're going to have enough V for this though. I think it's 24 in total that we need. Oh man, I wish this was TC6 where you could put the crystals in. Alright, after recharging the one several times, we got our enchanted fabric. Oh, we need to recharge again. I think I've already spent like over 30 minutes this episode just recharging the wand. I did fly out a little bit further over here, found some juicy, juicy ore nodes over the side of the river. Also, these pears, <laughs> all the pears in the trees, they look so much like the otter nodes. You see that one over there? That's like a pear. This one's an otter node though. Not a pear. Okay, we got the Thaumaturge robes. Let's actually make sure we equip this so that we get the discount on crafting the leggings, which should be like this. And finally, the boots. So, we do want to upgrade this set. To get the next year of fabric, the Bewitched Fleece. This is where we make use of our spinning wheel here. So the recipe said it was four pieces of string. Is it like this? Ah, yeah. And this gives us yarn. The yarn is one to one with the bewitched fleece, and it looks like we need three per armor set. But there is only two two pieces of armor we can upgrade. That's enough yarn. We do also need the thomium version of this as well. We also send this through the spinning wheel, thomium thread, and finally we need the golden version. Insufficient V again. Maybe there's some in the iron cap. Nope. Okay, hopefully now, after a quick refilling trip, we can get our six Bewitched Fleece. That's only three. We have two ones. Nope. <laughs> We're still too short. Alright, there is two more. And we can start to upgrade our armor set. Insufficient V again. And the full set has been acquired. This should be a quest. Witchy women. Let's see how we look now. Aha, very fancy. So now, just with the armor alone, we get a 15% V discount on any craft. And I wanted to prioritize the armor before we invest in any of the other Thaumcraft goodies. One of the other pieces of armor I would like to get today is the Nano Boots of the Traveler. There's no crafting recipe yet since we don't have the research, but I know that this is an infusion recipe. Which means the next step for us is to get infusion up and going. So I have done the research for this already, that is a lot of V. <laughs> Looks like we need to start off with some crystal clusters and arcane stone. The arcane stone is not too bad to be honest. We have a lot of these crystal shards. Oh yeah, a few hundred of each we have here. So we turn these into the clusters. Insufficient V again. At some point though, we do have the tools in this pack to be able to move the aura nodes around. I'm not so familiar with that mechanic, but it means that we don't have to go out in the world and recharge our wand every five minutes. Actually, before we go crafting the Runic Matrix, we should make sure that we unlock the quest for it in the quest book, which comes back to this Niter in the Crucible, and I think it's time to get the Alchemical Construct. So it took a bunch of research to get here, but we first of all need the Essentia Tubes, some Thaumium, some Steel, and Quicksilver. You may or may not remember, actually, we've been using Quicksilver quite a lot. Uh, this comes from Mercury. Mercury we get from Centrifuge and Redstone, and this is what we use actually to process some of our Platinum Dust. So, we're gonna make some into nuggets. We will need quite a lot of thomium, but I think we should have, yeah, almost 200 thomium from when we were making balance charts. Let's just add the recipe here for thomium screws. We need the screw recipe and also the bolt recipe. And we'll craft up some Essentia tubes. Oh, is this the wrong way, maybe? Yeah, maybe not too many of these, but this is also how we'll use what we'll use to transport Essentia around in the beginning. Now let's go for 16. It's so nice to have auto crafting at this stage of the game. This should be our Essentia Valves. Insufficient V. Even with the discount, we need so many of these. Look at all this. 
You know, it's tough to tell here if the Thumbcraft recipes are easier or more difficult than Divine Journey. I'm leaning towards the fact that they are slightly easier actually, but not by much. The, the, the whole V thing is <laughs> quite the pain to deal with. Alright, we got two alchemical constructs and our quest. To do anything with these alembics and get the automation for the crucible going, we also need the alchemical furnace, which looks different to Thomcraft 6, and it looks like it also produces pollution. Interesting. Over here at our crucible, some glowstone, redstone, nether rack, and more glowstone gives us our niter. Oh, I definitely messed the ratios up there. I think just not enough glowstone here. Ah, there we go. Alright, so I've been doing a little bit more thumb crafting, but uh, I realised that collecting V at this stage of the game before we can move the nodes around is getting very tedious. So, I was doing some research in the Thomonomicon. Unfortunately, we had to pick up some warp for this thing. It's really, really difficult to see on this one. I didn't actually realise this would give us warp. But I wanted to unlock the primal shrooms here. So we got some of these vishrooms from a quest reward, and we can actually also buy them from the quest book, which we're going to do here. Yeah, four slivers of entropy, two pumpkins, and also a vishroom. Gives us the primal shrooms. I'm going to make as many as we can of this, actually. Alright, so from what I understand, we want to actually plant these shrooms. Oh yeah, I've started growing some pumpkins so that we can craft some more. We are going to create a little area off to the side of our infusion altar here. And this setup is only going to be temporary until we can get the nodes. Which is why I didn't really want to pick up the warp from this since we don't need it long term. Anyways, we're going to use some of this fertilized dirt, really easy to craft. I heard this thing will actually speed up the growth, so let's let's test that theory out. And this also has to be a really high light level for these to grow as well. But since we're here in the void, we get a permanent light level of 15. Oh, it already grew. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, so the question is, how do we harvest this? Maybe it's not fully grown yet. Oh, another one grew. All right, well, while we're waiting on that growing, I did start to set up our infusion altar here, along with some arcane alembics, which is what the Essentia is going to be transported into. We do still need the runic matrix itself, which in fairness is actually quite an easy craft. That opened up a bunch of different stuff here. I have no clue what any of this is. <laughs> this is the end. I think this quest actually opens up Adept Thaumaturgy. Yeah, right here, the second chapter in Thaumcraft. I have mastered the basics. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> We've barely even started this. Alright, so to set this up, I don't know if I've got the bricks the wrong way, but I guess we'll soon find out. I think the runic matrix has to go on top of the pedestal. Or is it one above the pedestal? I think it's one above the pedestal. Hit it with the wand. It does nothing. Okay, I think maybe these are backwards. Oh no, I was right the first time. Bricks are on, on the bottom, but we do need the, these aspects in order to activate it. Yeah, that's right. We don't have the caster's gauntlet in this version of Thumbcraft. Have these things fully grown yet? Maybe we need to break them. I don't know if that refilled the wand or not. <laughs> Let's try again. Oh, it is. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, we definitely want to spam these then. Oh, that is awesome. Okay, we need a little bit more ordo. Before we progress with any more Thumbcraft though, hello chicken, we're going to take a little trip into the nether here. I hope I'm going the right direction. No, I'm going the complete opposite direction. <laughs> And we are looking for this thing right here. This mining pipe is a good sign. Actually, it's not a good sign. That means it's not finished yet. <laughs> Either that or we ran out of fuel. So, I set up our miner here in the nether. Oh my goodness, look at all this. I think it probably voided some of the stuff here. Oh, this is way too much. Yeah, we need to craft some more compressed chests whenever we set this up again. Looks like we are out of fuel. You may remember on Europa when we first set this thing up, we were using the ender tanks to transport the drilling fluid. Well, it turns out that we have enough power just from one turbo combustion engine to be able to power an MV mixer and just mix this on site. But I think that's going to be enough redstone, pyrite, iron, copper, etc. We're going to grab all this up. Now, this is actually now a lot of things to be carrying around, but uh, I think it's worth considering the amount of ores and things we get out of this. What do we even do with all this though? <laughs> oh, this is the problem, like, look at all this unprocessed stuff we have. And the thing is, we're actually out of diamonds to make any more compressed chests. I was going to set this miner up in the twilight forest to get some more of the Thomcraft shards. But I mean, if we've got nowhere to store all of this stuff, we may end up just using the single blocks instead. Yeah, I think we will just go for the single block miner. I managed to empty out one of the compressed chests at least. But you don't want to see the mess that's left behind there. <laughs> 
Anyways, we're looking for specifically the Perdicio shards. Looks like we got an Orvain right here, actually. Oh look, it's a squirrel. You don't see many of those things around here. Alright, so from here, let's see if we can get the next tier of Wand. I think it's actually going to be a Scepter, and by the way, thank you so much to Metis, or Shadow of X. You, you guys may have seen him in the comment section. He is our resident Thumbcraft expert. <laughs> I think I've mentioned his name before. But if you guys are looking for any help on Thumbcraft, then there is some pins left in our Discord channel. The next progression we want to go for though is the Silverwood Wand Core. More research, oh it's a big one, nice. <laughs> hey. Alright so yeah, this opens up the ability for us to make scepters or staves. We want to go for scepters here. One more research note to unlock. Like this. Alright, so we've now unlocked 44 pages of recipes here for the scepters. I guess there's some wands mixed in here as well, but we want the gold banded greatwood scepter, which has a capacity of 75. And as you can see, this needs 60 V. Our wand only holds 50, but hopefully with the discounts here, we should be able to manage this. So we will need a few more gold caps for this. We need two more lich bones, which we have here. And we also need something called the primal charm. That is a lot of V to craft with, but... These are just a bunch of the shards, which is why I wanted to place our miner down. Oh, and this is rose gold as well. We have some rose gold dust. I have a feeling this is a blast furnace recipe though. Yeah, it is. Okay, let's get this started right now. At least there's only 20 seconds with our overclocked blast furnace here. I think it's also about time we repurpose this armor stand here. This was meant to be for a radiation suit, which apparently just disappeared off this thing. Actually, maybe it's not the best idea to use this. I don't want our Brewitch set disapp- yeah, let's not- <laughs> I don't trust that thing after it stole our hazmat suit. And after some more crafting, we can pick up our Primo Charm. Let's actually scan all these things. Alright, what are we missing here? I think just a, another Great Wood Rod. After we get the rest of the materials, I think it's just a matter of putting this together. Assuming we get enough discount with this, this was something I wasn't so sure about. Looks like we're at 54, we still have to switch out our robe. This takes us to 51, oh, we're one short. How do we get more discount here? You know, coming back to the Nano Boots of the Traveler, this actually gives us 4% V discount compared to the Thaumaturge Boots of just 1. So I think this right here is our solution. But this does require us to do the infusion stuff. And also unlock the research for this as well. So I did do the research for the initial Boots of the Traveler, which looks like this. Not too bad to be honest, but we do need these aspects in Essentia format, or in liquid format, which means that we have to put this alchemical furnace to use. And we'll also need a way of stabilizing the altar. So if you're not familiar with the Thomcraft mechanics, basically we need to make this runic matrix stable by making it all symmetrical on all sides. And in fact, I'm not sure if this table and things will interfere with this. That I'm not sure about, but I know for a fact that this abacus, which I was confused about earlier on, this will be able to tell us the stability. <laughs> Also, you might be thinking that the bricks, the arcane stone bricks is a simple recipe. I think they're just crafted like default stone bricks, but look at this. Of course it's been gregified. Alright, so I've been grinding out some progress here. First of all, I worked on this alchemical furnace, added some warded jars to be able to store the essentia from this thing. It's not fully automated yet, but it takes some time, and I'm not actually sure if we need to fully automate essentia like we did in Divine Journey. I'm not sure exactly how big a role Thomcraft plays in late game, but we did also get the Thaumatorium unlocked, which should make getting more of these primal shrooms a bit easier. So all we need to do now, we don't need to throw anything into the crucible anymore. We can just craft some of these slivers of entropy. Grab two pumpkins, or no, four pumpkins, and melt all of this in our alchemical furnace. 
we'll need to grab two of our warded jars, which for now we're just moving over manually. So because each of these only have the one aspect on it, we only need to work with the one alembic. That should all be sent out into this warded jar. We can wear our goggles to see what's inside. So this one here has Perdicio, and we also want to melt the pumpkins down. There's a lot more aspects than there was in Divine Journey. Maybe it'll tell us here, yeah, Messis. So once we have Messis and Perdicio, we give this Vish Rooms and it will give us Primal Shrooms. Oh, I melted too many pumpkins. I think it was only one pair. If you don't mess up the ratios like I do, it does give you a perfect ratio. <laughs> it shouldn't, it doesn't leave any excess in the cauldron, I mean. Anyways, I also switched out the floor here with Quicksilver, which if we check with our Abacus, we are now getting a total stability of 7, which isn't great to be honest. We, uh, we have a lot more Quicksilver to be placed. So to get the Quicksilver, I have set up a new centrifuge here for Redstone. Redstone we have in abundance, as you saw earlier on. So we can centrifuge 10 Redstone for 3 Mercury, and then send that through the Solidifier for 1 Quicksilver, which all just goes into our interface. And the Quicksilver we can just craft here in the terminal into blocks. We can also get this from Sift and Cinnabar. Should be a tiny amount in here, I did crush down some more. There's not really much other use for Cinnabar right now, so we're just gonna sift all of this. So obviously when you're placing this down, you want it to be symmetrical on all sides. As you can see here, if we place it, if we place just one Quicksilver, it does say that it's missing eight partners. I don't know why it's eight though. Surely it would be another three on the other side. I don't know. <laughs> but this thing does tell you if you're if you're gonna be unstable which obviously we don't want when we're crafting with this thing. So we'll just keep expanding this one layer at a time. There, now we're up to eight even. It also works underneath as well, we have some mob skulls. Although from my understanding we don't actually need to have anything unique under here. I think we can actually just spam quicksilver blocks everywhere <laughs> and that will give us maximum stability, so long as we have enough of them. Here, let's clean up the crucible before I forget what's in here. So let's now see if we have the stability required for Boots of the Traveller. So we need leather boots, a feather. Wait, actually, we should check for stability. And this is not set up the same way as our pedestal, so I'm going to err on the side of caution. And we'll set our pillars up like the recipe has. So now we can put two air clusters, four enchanted fabric, a feather, and a fish. Oh, this is only an instability of two, and we have a total stability of nine. So we should be able to handle this no problem, so long as we give it the aspects. So we need 25 Volatis, Air and Itter, and 5 Aqua. There is actually relatively few items in the NEI page, and I think that's because we've only scanned this many. Although maybe not, it doesn't show us the triple aluminium plate. I don't know why this is here. <laughs> I don't know how this works in 1.7. There's probably some items here in our old storage room that will help us out in this situation. Only two feathers, that's not what I was hoping to see. I see one. No feather. <laughs> oh man. Alright, I think we got all of the Essentia. I made kind of a mess here and we have some Essentia split between multiple jars. But it should be able to take from these things. We're just waiting on some more Itter here, which appears to be in the top one. I don't know. <laughs> should have made some labels for these, I think. 25, yeah, there we go. Alright, I double checked everything. We should be good for this infusion. Boots of the Traveller. Oh, we don't get the cool completion sound. <laughs> nice. Alright, so how do we upgrade these things into nano boots of the Traveller? I'm assuming there's some sort of research for this one. Oh, hey, look at that. I didn't notice this tab before. Look at that, that's our enchanting table. And the ender chest. I think we first need the electric boots of the Traveller. Please be a small research paper. Alright, we got the research, let's see what the recipe's like. Very annoying, <laughs> is the answer. <laughs> oh boy, okay, here we go. Wait, advanced RE battery? We can do this. It's gonna take me a while, but we can do this. So, Tutaman should be our last aspect that we need. Actually didn't take me that long to gather all these materials. Double check the stability, where's our wand? Don't tell me I melted it down. <laughs> no, it's in here. Thomcraft infusion is one of the best mechanics. I mean, it's really, really tedious to do this, but <laughs> it's fun when you when you actually get it working. Aha! Electric Boots of the Traveller. And the quest. So we do have one more upgrade path for the Nano Boots of the Traveller, which is how we get our discount. I don't think these give any discount. Oh, hold on. Wait, we can get a 1% out of this. Does, does this mean we can get our wand? Or the scepter, I guess it is. Oh, look at this. We're 0.4 off. 
So close, so close. Although saying that, an extra 1% may not actually bring us below 50. We may need the nano goggles revealing as well. I don't know, let's see, let's do the research for this first, see what the recipe is like. Okay, Vitreous and Ordo. This is our last chance. Are we going to take the warp? I think so. Oh, you know what? This actually isn't too bad. The aspects is the most annoying part. <laughs> yeah, melting all this manually at this stage is the most annoying part of this. But actually, I think we can do this this episode. Yeah, I'm hoping the durability isn't going to be an issue on these things. I guess we'll see. Hold on. We just need some more feathers from these guys. All right, here we go. Energy crystal, our nano suit boots, two electric motors. I didn't want to place this here. <laughs> two electron wire and two thomium plates. We're good for stability as well. Now, hopefully the durability doesn't mess with us here on the battery there and the boots. Okay, last item. It worked. Nano boots of the traveler. Let's give these things a charge. We really should make the charge pad. Or what is that thing called? I don't know. <laughs> the thing to charge your armor. We're still using the machines here. Okay, this is our run speed without the boots. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's way too fast. Yeah, that is almost too fast. Especially on the concrete. Let's try without the concrete. Oh yeah, that's still really, really quick. Oh, and this isn't even me sprinting either. Like, this is just normal walking speed. Anyways, what about our discount? Are we able to get this now? Oh, we can! Oh, look at that. 49.2. And we can pick up our Gold Banded Great Wood Scepter. Which has a capacity of 75. And will allow us to craft the next staff. <laughs> There's a bit more wand progression still to do before we can craft the top tier Thorncraft items. But once again, we are running a bit long today. If you guys have any suggestions on the block palette we should use over here, as I mentioned, we will be switching this out to something a bit more magical. Oh man, it's going to take me a while to get used to these boots. But yeah, we're going to wrap things up here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon for some more Greg Tech New Horizons.